So do it, you can. Uh... Okay. So it's uh, really our pleasure to have Yasek André from uh, CNRS and Université Sorbonne Paris Nord, who is going to talk about uh, the Soliton, the big title, huh? yes, the Soliton resolution for equivalent with maps. And a big result. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tej and Nader, for the invitation. It's really an honor, honor for me to speak for the first time in this seminar. Uh, yeah, this is a joint work. I'm going to present a joint work from this summer uh, with uh, Andrew Laurie from MIT uh, about uh, energy critical equivalent uh, wave maps. Uh, let me tell you what uh, is the model I'm going to consider. Uh, first, uh, what are wave maps? Uh, uh, here I'm uh, looking at wave maps uh, defined on uh, one plus two dimensional Minkowski plane and with values in the sphere S2, which we can view as embedded in R3. R3. Um, and uh, we say that such an application uh, defined on the Minkowski plane with values in S2 is a wave map if it is uh, the former critical point of the Lagrangian. Uh, which you see here, and which is the same as the Lagrangian for the usual wave equation, the linear wave equation. Uh, just here, of course, a wave equation would take values in a vector space. And here we ask the map to be, have values in a sphere. Uh, so that uh, a critical point means critical point, of course, for, uh, only for variations which uh, are sphere value, right? So th this. Uh, uh, this um, for this reason, this is a non turns out to be a nonlinear equation. Uh, but because this comes just as constraining the constraining uh, the natural, I mean, for, from the same Lagrangian as the wave equation, but but constraining it to be sphere valued, it's supposed to be a natural analog of linear waves in, in a geometric set. So if you do this computation, this is easy to do, of course, and the only Lagrange equation is found to be uh, this equation here. Oh, I can use laser here. So this equation is found to be the only Lagrange equation. So you see this is a nonlinear equation. Uh, and it uh, can be proved easily that uh, there is local well positiveness for smooth data. Uh, but then considerable effort was made to study uh, either well positiveness for low regularity or global well positiveness for small data. And this was mainly in the 90s, uh, works by, by these mathematicians, like Kleiner, Mansell, Sterman, Stataru, Tao, and, and others. Uh, so this problem is very challenging and not completely understood. Um, I, going to talk only about the special case uh, of the data with symmetry, which are called equivariant wave maps. And so for the general equations I mentioned, uh, what is studied is either local robustness or global uh, dynamics or global uh, long time behavior for small data. Uh, here, I want to study uh, long time behavior for large data, but only in a specific case of data with uh, some symmetry. And the symmetry I'm asking for is uh, this. Uh, so here, if we use um, a, a polar coordinates in, in the plane, in the mean plane, and the spherical coordinates in the target, uh, then what I'm asking for is that if uh, uh, theta is the polar angle in the plane, then uh, here uh, there is uh, the angle corresponding angle, uh, which is uh, lo long longitude, right? It's called the uh, k times theta, where, where k is an a natural number, uh, but not non zero, uh, so a positive, a positive natural number. Um, uh, okay, and so it is easy to check that su such data of this form is preserved by the flow. So if we start with this kind of initial data, then for all time we will have this kind of data. Uh, with what is evolving here is the co, co uh, which I call small psi. 
Okay, so it's a small p is an unknown scalar function here. And uh, the equation for p is, is this equation, uh, which I call WM. Um, and uh, uh, what this means is that uh, the, this capital psi is a wave map, if and only if small psi solves this equation. This is what I mean. By. Uh, and, and then I will forget uh, about the uh, capital psi and we will only work with small psi. So what I wanted to do here is just motivate the equation for small psi. But once this is done, we, we, we can focus just on this equation Wn, uh, which is parameter, parameterized by k. Uh, uh, so what, what I want to argue is that this is a, this, this is a sem, semi-linear equation, okay, uh, for a scalar, Function psi, but which appears in a natural way from from a geometric setting. Uh, the Lagrangian of this, uh, so so then we can uh, compute the various uh, quantities in terms of the small uh, on the, uh, of the small psi. Now this is a Lagrangian, and uh, okay, the Lagrangian has a form. Uh, kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So this is a potential energy part, this is kinetic energy part. Uh, and, and so we, if we take plus, then we, we get uh, conserved, conserved energy. And this is the conserved energy of this, uh, uh, of this system. Okay, so this is at the level. Uh, so the time derivative is just taken L2 norm of the time derivative and, and uh, 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 and the field is, uh, is somewhere at the level of H1. Right? It's one derivative taken at an L2 norm of the first derivative. Um, now, what, what we can observe is that uh, there is scaling invariance of the equation. Uh, and scaling invariance is just rescaling the time and, uh, time and space by the same number. Uh, if psi is a wave map, it solves the WMK. And we take any uh, positive positive lambda. Then, if you rescale t and r by by this lambda, then we obtain also um, a wave map. And uh, and moreover, what is so? This is for uh, in any dimension. This is true. Uh, but if we uh, if what is specific for the dimension one plus two, so for the uh, case of the Minkowski plane. Is the invariance of the energy by this the same scaling? Uh, it's easy to, co to, to compute that the energy of this rescaled map, psi lambda, is the same as the energy of the initial map. Uh, and this is the reason why this problem, as I said, is uh, called energy critical problem. Yeah, because, um, because the scaling of the energy, uh, energy is preserved by the scaling of the equation. Uh, and here I took the convention. So here I put lambda in the de denominator. So this means that if lambda is small, then we are uh, making a zoom on a small region. Uh, so uh, psi lambda is, uh, is concentrated. So if lambda is small, then psi lambda is concentrated in space and time. So it's concentrated in space and evolves fast. Okay, but it has the same energy. So what energy critical means that the conservation of energy, a bound on en a priori bounds on the energy do not prevent concentration of, of, the, of the map, of the same profile, let's say. So the, 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 a priori bound of the energy does not prevent a given profile to concentrate. Um, all right, because of so energy is the, the on, on like essentially the only conservation law we, we have at our our disposition here and for this reason we try to to understand the flow in the energy space so in functional spaces which for uh, which uh, are related to the energy uh, and the, to, to this purpose i'm defining the energy norm uh, this is the energy norm i'm calling this energy norm e uh, and uh, okay, so as you see, as in the energy, we, I just took L, L to north square of the kinetic energy, and then for the pot, uh, for the potential part, uh, I'm using this norm H, uh, which is essentially H1 norm. Uh, okay, we, with the hardy term here, but essentially H1, uh, like in the energy. Uh, 
so this is a norm which uh, which is related to the energy um, and one can one indeed one can observe easily that if the L infinity norm of this map theta zero is small, then this energy norm is, or square is essentially of the size of the energy or, or up to a constant. And uh, right, this is for psi zero is small in infinity, then psi zero does not necessarily have to be small in infinity and in, in L infinity and in general. Um, we have uh, what we call finite energy sectors, which are defined like this. So what is easy to see is that if psi zero has a finite energy, then uh, its limit at zero at its infinity has to be a multiple of pi. And according to what integer multiple of pi, and according to what integer multiple of pi it is, we define these energy sectors. Uh, this is the energy sector EMN, which is defined as all data of uh, finite energies, which at zero converts to n pi, and the infinity converts to n pi, some other integer multiple of pi. Uh, so, okay, because if you remember in the energy, there was a sine sine function here, uh, right? And this is what forces this to converge to a multiple of pi. So the sine uh, has to converge to zero. zero. Now this is how they look like E0, 0, zero. this means it starts at zero, at zero, and then converts again to zero, but it could be E0, zero, one, starting at zero, at R equal to zero, at infinity converging to, to pi, let's say, for example. Um, and what, what, what is, was essentially proved by uh, Shata and Struve in 94, in the case K equal to one, and then um, extended to bigger K, is that the, this equation uh, is locally well posed in uh, each uh, finite energy sector uh, in uh, an appropriate sense. Uh, so for, for any initial data, if we take in any fixed, we fix ourselves an energy sector, we take initial data in the sector and there exists a solution, uh, which is not necessarily for all time, but locally uh, in time, there exists a unique solution in this energy sector. Um, yeah, so, so this is a local, local in time theory. Uh, then if we look at, uh, try to uh, uh, say something about the uh, dynamics, then typically we will look at the linearization error psi equal to zero. And this is the linearization, right? I just uh, uh, replace sine by sine of psi by psi. Um, and so essentially from the proof of this local repositiveness, one obtains that for a small data of small energy, there is the so-called scattering. Uh, so if uh, the initial data has small energy, then psi exists globally. And we have this behavior here, this is called scattering. Uh, so as time goes to plus or minus infinity, the solution in terms of energy norm converges to um, a solution of the linear equation. So psi L is some solution of some linear equation, not necessarily for the same initial data, but some linear, some equation, solution of this linear equation. And we know that there is, so asymptotically, the, as we say the nonlinear effects become negligible in long time. And all this is- Just a can you ask you a question? Like yes. the behavior at, uh, at R equal zero and at R equal infinity, Right. Mm -hmm. The uh, is it conserved by the equation? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? The the behavior of the solution at r equal zero and r equal infinity. Mm -hmm. Right. You you said it is uh, n n pi or m pi. Yeah. The, those things are conserved by the equation, so it it is propag propagated by the equation, right? Uh, so this is what I, uh, the way I want to formulate this is that if you take this, there is a well positiveness in each uh, finite energy sector. So you take initial data in some energy sector and you get a solution in this, the same energy sector. So this is uh, equivalent to what you say. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, because I was wondering why you put the M pi here in this theorem, because it depends on your initial, in, in which space you are, right? I mean, you can take M to be zero. 
Uh, okay, okay, good. So here, the, I, I said that if it, what, what happens is that if psi zero is of small energy, then necessarily it is a, in a sector EMM for some M. So N is okay. equal to, but it doesn't have to be zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. Yeah. All, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, this, uh, this is small data. Then for the large data, exactly what happens if, if we are, are not necessarily in this uh, setting. So we, we uh, have this, uh, um, as we say, top topological uh, topological solitons or, or bubbles. Uh, so I want to look at minimize. So here, everything is another uh, notice. It happened in the, the sector EMM. And now I want to look for minimizers of uh, the energy, potential energy in sectors which are different than this uh, sector MM. So, so what is found is that on EMM, the minimizers of the energy are constant functions, constant in space time. So here are essentially looking at, at space, just at, at initial data, right? So we're looking at a potential energy. So it is, it's con a constant in space function, it's a minimizer in EMM. Uh, then in EMM plus one, uh, one finds explicit minimizers uh, and it, it, this, they have this, uh, this form. M pi plus the two arc tangent of R, R k over lambda power k for any lambda. Uh, and um, and on EM similar on EM M minus one is the same that the sign sign changes. And if we take any other sector, well, then we found find that there is no minimizer. Uh, no no no, there is no mean. So the insulin of the energy is not attained. There is no minimizer. Uh, and also by analyzing analyzing the ODEs, one can see that the, what I uh, listed here are the only uh, only stationary solutions of the equation. There are no other stationary solutions. Uh, okay, so, so of course these are stationary solutions. Stationary solutions, the static states, they play a crucial role in describing long-time behavior. Yes, so we, uh, of course we notice here that these are, uh, each of these solutions is a rescaling of, uh, of any other solutions and this reflects the, the scaling invariance of the equation. Um, okay, so I introduce in notation. So for lambda equal to one, I call this guy Q, uh, and then rescaling, we, we uh, write Q with the subscript lambda. Uh, all right, and, and what was found in in the works like ten years ago is uh, that these are so. so Essentially, they are the only uh, obstruction to scattering. And the precise formulation is uh, the following. This is called sequential soliton resolution. Uh, that if psi now is, is any finite energy wave map. So before we had uh, small energy, now we have uh, any finite energy wave map. Uh, then it was for, uh, stated for K in, uh, one or equal to one or equal to two, but it can be easily, the proofs apply also for bigger, bigger K. Um, and then we have the two cases. So either there is finite time, finite time uh, blow up. Uh, if T is finite, then, uh, then what happens is the following. So there exists uh, integers ML, a capital N, and the sequence, uh, okay, such that, uh, let me read it from, from the end. So we have this kind of decomposition for a sequence of time. So Tn is a sequence converging to, to the finite time of existence. And uh, for this sequence of time, the solution looks like this essentially. So uh, it, the main, main order in the energy space looks like a sum of rescaled uh, bubbles. Uh, Plus, um, uh, plus, uh, plus some something which is uh, which is um, which is of finite energy. Okay, uh, right. So here, what are the, these are rescale bubbles? And this case, uh, these are like a family of sequences lambda j n, 
And uh, the point is that lambda 1n is much smaller asymptotically, is n tends to infinity than lambda 2n, then this is much smaller than the next one, etc. cetera. Uh, this is the largest one, lambda n, n, and which is much smaller than t plus minus tn, and this uh, t plus mi minus tn corresponds to the light cone. No, all right, if uh, there is a singularity at t plus, then, uh, and we look at time tn here, then uh, t, t plus minus tn corresponds to the light, light cone. Um, uh, okay, so each, each this is each, this asymptotically decoupled, these solitons asymptotic, these bubbles asymptotically decoupled, and uh, the whole solution looks like this. And then there is an analogous statement in the case, case of global existence. Uh, also, there exists a sequence of times such that this, there is the same kind of decomposition. It just here, instead of uh, this psi zero star, which was a finite energy map uh, uh, before, uh, here we have a solution of the linear of the linearized equation. So C CL here is a solution of the linearized equation, uh, and uh, we computed it at the end for the end tending to infinity. And this case, uh, they satisfy a similar condition. So each next scale is much smaller, smaller than the previous one. And then the uh, last one is much smaller than Tn and Tn also corresponds to the light cone in the global case. Okay, oh, yeah, I, th I think I get the right picture to just, uh, like, I don't know if this is, uh, uh, okay. So for a sequence of time Tn, uh, this is uh, how the solution is supposed to look like. So there is a decomposition into a, a superposition of bubbles. So this is the first one, which is uh, its scale is much smaller than the second scale. And then th this one is much smaller than the next one. And then again, there could be another one, which is much bigger than the previous one. And then at the end, there is some map, some rest, uh, which is just of finite energy. And uh, okay, and these are the, the scales which, which correspond. Uh, all right, this is the sequential uh, decomposition. Uh, so, of, of course, the, all right, uh, it, it depends on, on earlier works. Uh, so, he, okay, I, here I, I drew a picture of these light cones, which I mentioned. So this is a, the this is the blow up case, and this is this is the global existence case. So let's look at the uh, at the blow, uh, blow up case. So so if you remember, I said that the scales of the bubbles are strictly smaller than the scale corresponding to light, uh, the light cone. So this means that each uh, for any red, if we draw a red cone like this with the slope which is big, bigger than the light, than uh, one. So, which is strictly inside the light cone, then all these bubbles will lie in this red region, in this red cone. And the whole energy in the blue region this is captured by this psi zero star map. Um, and in the global in the global case, it's similar. So, all the bubbles, if we draw a light cone, like a, not a light cone, but a cone like this with a slope which is bigger than one, but arbitrarily arbitrarily large, then the bubbles always lie in the red region, and and the blue region, the energy in the blue region is captured by this linear solution of the linear equation. Uh, so, so these works of uh, earlier works of, from early nineties said that in this region between this red uh, any red cone and the light cone in this region the energy converges to zero always and this is these works are fundamental this is a starting point of this whole analysis um, all right um, you know, what what was observed uh, also by, by by code by the authors have I mentioned the authors? Uh, so the authors of this result is uh, Kot, Kenny, Gloria, and Schlag in a special case. And then the Kot improved this, Raphael Kot, uh, to obtain the whole, uh, so this statement, the full statement. And then Gia Koenig also gave a different proof uh, for the case K equal to two. Uh, yeah, and what Cot observed uh, is that in this uh, blue region, 
uh, the convergence holds in continuous time because uh, the natural problem is that we have just uh, decomposition, decomposition for a sequence of times. So a natural problem that, that was uh, asked is that uh, if this holds for continuous time. And, and he observed that in this blue region, uh, yes, this holds for continuous time. There is continuous time convergence to uh, this size zero star uh, state. Um, once one uh, cuts uh, away this uh, red region, then there is continuous time convergence. Uh, but then, of course, one does not see any bubbles. Yeah. Let's see, there is convergence in continuous time. And also in the global case, there is convergence in continuous time uh, to the linear. Uh, to this linear uh, solution of the linear equation, linearized equation. Yeah, yeah. and then there are some relatively easy observations which say that if, if the bubbles are all of the same size, then essentially for variational, the bivariational arguments, there is and this, uh, what I just said, that the con uh, this is continuous time outside of the red region. Uh, then uh, one obtains that then there is convergence in, uh, in continuous time. If all the bubbles have the same sign, so if there is the same sign, then there is continuous uh, convergence in continuous time. Uh, so, so what I can mention also is that, um, is that this result that does, is not interested in, uh, in um, determining what can act actually ha happen. Uh, so, so what configurations, uh, so constructions were not done uh, of various configurations. Uh, just this uh, limits, the CRM limits the possible uh, options of how the solution can look like, but it was not uh, determined what options are actually realized, realized and what, what are not realized. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so, so there is this question of continuous time uh, convergence, and this was settled for k equal to one uh, this year by Dukes, Skenning, Martel, and Lemaire, uh, which proved the following result. It looks very much the same, just instead of the sequence of time, we have continuous time converge convergence. Uh, okay, so here is limited for k equal to one. In the blow up case, uh, we have a very similar situation, but just instead of sequences of scales, lambda j n, lambda, lambda one n, lambda two n, etc., we have continuous functions, lambda one of t, lambda two of t, to lambda n of t. Uh, and here, instead of having convergence for a sequence of time, tn, we have just limit in continuous time as t goes to t plus this uh, solution uh, decomposes as uh, a superposition of bubbles plus this um, rest term, the psi zero star as before. Uh, and, and there is an analogous statement in, in, the, in the global uh, case, global in time case. Um, <clears throat> So this is what is called, I guess, for this community calls it solid resolution result, this kind of result. And yeah. And this kind of result for the first time was obtained in, by Dupier, Koenig and Mer in 10, 10 years ago, in 12, for the energy critical focusing wave equation in three dimensions uh, with the power of nonlinearity. And it was obtained by the, uh, they introduced a specific method which they called energy channels to prove this uh, result. Um, it was uh, generalized by them to all odd dimension uh, two years ago. And this uh, theorem from the last slide, it also uses this method of energy channels. It uh, adapted the method of energy channels to, to prove the result for wave maps. Yeah, uh, and uh, what we did is to prove uh, exactly the same result, but for any k. Uh, this, is, this is a theorem. Uh, here, this is exactly the same. So nothing changed here, just uh, there is no limitation for k equal to one. k can be any natural number. 
Um, and uh, we obtained with Lori, uh, so three months after the previous result, uh, we obtained this result for NEK. Um, uh, but, but using a different approach, and of course I will describe, uh, describe this approach in a second. I uh, just I want to mention uh, why uh, this uh, the imitation two K is not so a two K equal to one is not so minor. Uh, I think. Um, so uh, first, I want to mention that there is uh, another model which is often studied, which is the radial critical young mix model, and this is a very it's essentially equivalent to the uh, wave maps equation for k equal to two. Uh, so our result covers also, I mean, our proof could be repeated and to co cover this case of the young miss equation. Um, uh, now, uh, well, one should ask, can ask the question, uh, what can actually uh, Happens. So as I mentioned, that this result does do not say nothing about the constructions, about what solutions actually exist. Uh, and here I would like to mention uh, some of the results uh, of this type of uh, construction results. Uh, so the first one was the construction. Uh, so the first non trivial construction was the one by Krieger, Shag, and Tataru. Um, and then by Rafael and Rodnia, uh, by Rodniansky and Sterpens and uh, Rafael Rodniansky, um, if, of one bubble which was exploded. Uh, so they, they constructed uh, so a non-trivial non-trivial uh, solution for, for for which such a result is meaningful. A solution resolution is meaningful, uh, but this was only for one bubble. Uh, then uh, I constructed uh, an example of two bubble solution uh, for wave maps, and also with Andrew uh, Laurie, we uh, uh, studied a bit more the, these uh, two, two bubble solutions. Uh, so we obtained like the asymptotics of these solutions, uh, but only for k bigger than or equal to two. Uh, this, uh, so. Um, so no solution of this type is known for k equal to one. Um, no solution which has more than one bubble is known for in the case k equal to one. And uh, I mean, there is no reason why it should exist. There is no, 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 no even informal argument why such a solution should exist. There are arguments why it, why it should not exist. Uh, so this is the difference, an important difference between k equal to one and, and k bigger than one. Then uh, that in k equal to one, actually, we don't know. Nobody knows if uh, there are examples to which uh, this theorem uh, is meaningful uh, for, for more than one bubble. Um, all right. So uh, uh, just a sec. I have a question now uh, concerning the value of n. The, the value of n, is it determined from the initial data? Like if you just look at the initial data, the, I'm asking again, maybe the same question, like the behavior at zero and, and, and at infinity, does that more or less fix the value of n? No, 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 uh, no, because it, 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 um, so for example, these two, two bubble solutions, which I mentioned just on this slide, uh, in one time direction, they have n equal to two. Uh, there are two bubbles. And in the other time direction, as we proved with Lori, uh, right. n is equal to zero. Uh, there, there is no oh, bubble. They can have constellations, like because one is plus, the other one is minus. Exactly, exactly. They can, they can collide. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Annihilate, sorry. People say annihilate, you know, in this. Uh, annihilate, Anni okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so n and we we uh, so in the theorem the theorem does not say what is n by looking at the initial data there is no recipe to determine what n will be it just said there is some n there exists the theorem says there exists n so that this is so uh, but and this applies uh, of course both to the sequential decomposition and continuous time decomposition but 
because the continuous time decomposition, of course, just improves the sequential decomposition. N has to be the same. It says there is for any sequence, there is N is the same. So what what um, uh, can be determined though is that in, uh, so already in the se uh, sequential decomposition, it could be said that N uh, does not depend on the uh, on the sequence. Uh, Oh, okay, but there was no way. There was no way to determine it uh, from uh, from uh, the initial data. Uh, so essentially, in the sequential in the sequential decomposition, we want uh, had to uh, calculate how much energy there is in the red region divided by the energy of the bubble, and then uh, and like this one obtains the number of the bubbles. And this did not depend on on the sequence because, as I said, in the blue region, the convergence was in continuous time. Uh, but this is what I can say. Uh, this is all, all one could say. One could say. Um, oh, oh, all right. Um, I would like to now to uh, mention some ide ideas of the proofs of the proof. Um, uh, which I said does not rely on tenets of energy, it uh, relies instead of uh, an, um, no return lemma strategy. Um, so what, what is, what, what is the, main, uh, the main idea? We know from this previous work, which I cited, that the, the decomposition holds for a time sequence. Uh, so, in, in order to prove that it holds for continuous time, you, we, we, we need to preclude, uh, so to prove that it is impossible to have this uh, kind of behavior, that uh, there is uh, a configuration which is, uh, so there is a state which is close to, 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 to a multi-bubble configuration, sorry, for some time. And then, uh, after some time, it, it goes far, uh, far away from a multi-bubble configuration. And then again, it, it comes close to, to um, it approaches a multiple configuration. So this kind of behavior, so this uh, process of uh, going from a multi-bubble configuration to something which is far from a multi-bubble configuration, this is what I'm going to call a collision. Um, and, and such a situation where uh, collision happens and then it recovers again, it's, it's multi-bubble shape. This I will call a collision interval or a collision time interval. Um, and what, uh, what we want is that this is impossible, essentially. And this kind of result is what in the literature before it was put in the works of Nakanishi uh, Schlag, Krieger Nakanishi Schlag. Um, and, and no return lemma. Uh, no, that is in here why it's called no return lemma. It, it cannot return it once it goes away from what about configuration, it cannot return. Um, uh, the difference here in this work is we, we, this kind of result was uh, already present in Duke of Smell, and, and as I said, in Nakanshi Schlag, figure Nakanshi Schlag, in the setting of a single uh, soliton, uh, which is linearly unstable. Uh, so the, the thing was that we, we had the family of solitons, uh, which could be either invariant by scaling or by translation in the case of the, case of the klein cordon equation. And the theorem said that once uh, by linear, linear unstable direction, it moves away from this state, then it cannot uh, come back again. It can never come back to the neighborhood of, uh, of uh, the family of the ground states uh, for the wave or for time order. Um, yeah, and, and uh, so we had the linear instability. Here we don't have, we have no linear instability. The, the uh, bubbles are stable, linearly stable. Uh, just what plays a similar role is uh, nonlinear interaction. So the uh, interaction between bubbles, between solitons, play a similar role as this nonlinear instability played in these uh, work, early, earlier works, which I mentioned. Uh, but the big lines of the analysis are the same. Um, and this strategy was used in. Uh, uh, so in this uh, work with Lori uh, on two bubbles, uh, we use already in area work the strategy where already uh, 
the, the main strategy, the strategy was this one, and already the, the like the instability mechanism was the um, interaction between bubbles and not nonlinear instability. So our proof is based very much on, on this area proof, which we did uh, four years ago. Uh, but uh, this proof was in a special case, just for two bubbles, and there was no no u zero star. U zero star was uh, supposed to be zero in this area one. Uh, okay, uh, so what is uh, how is this non no return lemma obtained? Uh, it's obtained like in the works of Duke Xmer and uh, Nakanish and Higgenschlag uh, from the viral identity. Um, here I wrote what is a viral identity for the wave map equation. Uh, so there is some uh, vector field uh, okay. and divergence in space time of the vector field is, is this, is negative. So it's minus R times the density, density of the kinetic energy. All right, uh, this is the, the viral identity. Um, uh, what I want to look at is this picture here. Is, so we recall that I'm going to prevent the return. So I'm going to prevent a collision, which means that I suppose that I have some uh, moment of time where the solution is close to matter bubble configuration. Then it goes away, there is a collision, and then it goes back again to a matter bubble configuration. And what we are going to do is essentially to integrate the viral identity on, on this region, this kind of region in space time. So this is an idea like this moving, moving, um, uh, moving, how should I say this? Uh, Non-vertical non, non boundary of this uh, integration of the cutoff region, it was already um, done in uh, Nakanishi Schlag uh, work. Uh, this idea well, is, not, is not ours. Yes. So, uh, all, all right. So, so this is the idea. We are going to integrate on some region, some well chosen region, the, the um, uh, viral identity, and obtain a conclusion by estimating from above the boundary terms and from below the space time integral of this term uh, in, in this whole region. Okay. We will prove that we, we will find a lower bound on the space time integral of uh, RDT phi square which is bigger than an upper estimate on the boundary terms. And this will be a contradiction which will give us the no return. Uh, so let's look at uh, what uh, we expect to be the size of various terms. Uh, so here, uh, let me look at this horizontal boundary. So there's in the boundary, I have this, this, and I have this non-horizontal boundary, it's like this. Uh, this, so let me just look at the horizontal boundary for now. Okay, what is a horizontal boundary? Here, this is essentially the spatial scale of of a multi bubble. No, all right, we have the all right. This is R. So this means the spatial scale of a multi bubble, uh, and and here. Okay, so this is a boundary. The, the non horizontal boundary. Let me neglect it for the time being. It's a, a bit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a bit technical and then it does not, well, we can deal with this, but this is not where the main idea comes from. So the, the, um, the multi, okay, so the, the, here on the horizontal boundary is a special scale of the multi-bubble, which will, is going to collide. And now here uh, we have, uh, uh, okay, so this is the upper, uh, upper bound of, of the boundary is going to be, um, right? So if you look at, I'm going to, inter we integrate, we use the green theorem, right? So I'm looking at this term and uh, we are integrating this on, uh, okay, so here what you recall, so the uh, measure is RDR always because it comes from the plane, uh, okay? We are on the plane, just in the polar coordinates. So RDR, so one R will disappear because of the measure. Uh, and then we have DT and DR, which are both at the level of L2. 
So using Cauchy's first, what will be, be left is one R, one copy of R. And so the boundary term will be of the same size as the, as the spatial scale. Uh, it will be much smaller than the spatial scale because there is dt phi here and dt phi is uh, small. If, if um, so if uh, I'm supposing that the state is closed to a matter bubble configuration, uh, which means that, uh, so a bubble is a stationary solution. So dt is equal to zero. The dt of the bubble is equal to zero. So if this is close to a matter bubble configuration, the dt is small. And so if uh, this boundary term is something which is much smaller than the uh, spatial scale from this small computation. Oh, okay, so, so now this is the upper bound. And then the, the lower bound of the space-time integral of the right-hand side on this region. Uh, well, uh, what, um, uh, uh, what we observe is that, this, so here the solution is far from a, it's far from a multi-bubble. Uh, and far from a multi bubble, what I want to say is that in mean, this means that the integral, space integral, the kinetic energy is uh, like one, it's of order one in mean. Uh, because uh, far from a multi bubble means intuitively that this is a solution which evolves in time, uh, which, is, which is far from, uh, far from a superposition of static states, which means that there is some evolution happening. Um, and this means that the kinetic energy is of order one. And so uh, what one finds is that the space-time integral of this right-hand side of the virial will be at, at least um, at least uh, of, the, of the length of the time uh, on which the collision takes place. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So, so this is what I said that the kinetic energy is in the mean at least of order one, if the solution is far from a multi bubble, this is what we call the compactness lemma. This occupies a, a large part of the paper. So here it's a, it maybe intuition tells us that this should be true, but then the proof is, uh, is quite long and it uses, in fact, uh, we redo almost uh, all the proof of the sequential, uh, sequential certain resolution. So the, the proof of this compactness lemma, which I said that far from a bubble implies kinetic energy in mean of order one, uh, this essentially, uh, we essentially repeat the ideas uh, of the sequential certain resolution. Uh, because by the way, the sequential certain resolution quite easily follows also from this. So this is essentially equivalent to sequential, sequential certain resolution. So th this part is essentially almost equivalent to sequential certain resolution. Uh, so, okay, so if we believe in this, then the question is, is the collision in the duration is bigger up to a constant than the spatial scale? Okay, if I know this, then I obtain a contradiction. I have the, the space integral is bigger than the collision duration and the boundary is much smaller than the spatial scale. If I have this, then there, this is a contradiction. So let me ex explain uh, how we prove this. Uh, so uh, my, my goal is to prove that collision duration is bigger up to a constant than the spatial scale. So now we have to look carefully at what spatial scale we want to look at exactly. And this is what I'm going, I want to define. I will tell you very quickly why this is true, why the spatial, uh, why, they, why the duration is bigger than the spatial scale, and then I will finish the talk, okay? Uh, so three more minutes, is it fine? No, it's okay. Yeah, you can take even more. Oh, okay. Um, so, so what, what scale do we want to look at? Uh, this is this notion which we uh, use of interior exterior bubbles. Uh, so uh, let me choose some number big K, which is uh, one of these numbers one to, to N, N being the number of bubbles, and AB, which is a sub-interval, it's some a time interval, and take some numbers eta and epsilon. Uh, so, so now I will define a bit more precisely what, what uh, I mean by a collision interval. So we say that AB will be a collision interval with N minus K X zero bubbles if uh, there are the following conditions. So the distance from a multi-bubble, so here D is the distance uh, from a multi-bubble plus radiation configuration. So at the end points, uh, we want it to be smaller than epsilon. And somewhere in the middle, we want the distance to be bigger than eta. Okay, so one should think that eta would be much bigger than epsilon. Then, and this is what I called in the beginning um, 
uh, uh, collision, right? It was close to a multiple configuration, then went far away from multiple configuration, then comes back uh, close again to a multiple configuration. And uh, moreover, uh, we require, uh, so here, this is the distinction you in tier and in tier bubbles is that there exists a curve, uh, rho k of t, uh, such that in this region are bigger than rho k, uh, psi with the epsilon close to n minus k bubbles plus radiation. So this means that uh, there are n minus k bubbles which do not collide, and there are uh, k bubbles in the interior. Uh, so this is, um, uh, uh, so the first bubble is it has much smaller scale than the second one. I recall. So the first one is the smallest scale, the second one, etc., and the biggest scale is the n n l scale. Okay. So uh, here we uh, what we are saying is that n minus k bubbles do not enter to a collision, and k bubbles enters. Some of them enter into a collision, but n, n minus k essentially don't enter to the collision. Uh, so now we define capital K to be the smallest number such that there exists some fixed eta positive and the sequence epsilon n converging to zero such that there exists a sequence of intervals uh, of collision intervals which correspond to this parameter. So I want there to exist an infinite sequence of collision intervals with its epsilon converging to zero, eta to be fixed, and uh, K, uh, so the number of bubbles entering to a collision to be the smallest possible. And this is how K is defined, and, and, and the correct scale to look at now, the, on the spatial scale, is the scale of the K, uh, case, uh, this bubble number K. Uh, okay, and, and now what I'm going to argue is that if we look at this scale, then, um, then the duration of the collision is at least equal to the spatial scale, and this is what can lead to a contradiction. Um, so this is the, the statement. Uh, there exists, okay, a constant C, which depends on the solution uh, and epsilon, such that if we have a collision interval with, with these parameters, epsilon, et, and k, then the duration of the collision, this is the duration of the collision, is bigger than a constant times the, the minimum, well, essentially the spatial scale, the scale of the, cave bubble. So here mu k is the scale of the cave bubble. And this is a picture proof of this. So here we, we have um, a, a situation at the end point. So at the end point, we are close to a multi-bubble. So all this is a multi-bubble, okay? We have multi-bubble, close to a multi-bubble. Uh, and uh, this is the, the bubble number k. This is the bubble number k. And this is a bubble number k, uh, k plus one. So this, bu this bubble does not enter into collisions anymore but by, by hypothesis, by assumption. And this uh, could, could enter or could, can or uh, does not have to, but could enter to, to a collision. Uh, so now if we assume that this duration of the collision interval is much smaller than this scale, okay, the scale of this bubble, then what would happen is that we would just draw a light cone here, okay, like this, draw a light cone. And what we would find is that this bubble cannot evolve, essentially, because it's, it's a local Cauchy theory. So this bubble has some scale on a time which is much smaller than its scale. It stays what it was. It's, it's a section of solution. So by local theory, it does not evolve. And so uh, we would find that this bubble does, does not enter either to a collision. But if this does not enter to a collision, these ones do not enter to the collision by assumption. Then this means that all these bubbles do not enter to the collision, which would mean that K is not the minimal possible. The K is not the minimal possible. And, uh, and this is uh, essentially how the proof goes, that uh, collision have to be, if once we correctly chose the scale at which we look like, and this cho choice is given by the definition of K, then the duration of the collision always has to be at least uh, comparable to the this uh, spatial scale. Mm, and then, okay, now, now I, I explain a little bit about this uh, compactness lemma, but I, I can skip it if I should stop. Or, uh, okay, Tesh is saying you, nothing. You, you can no, no, it's fine. Uh, yes, sir, you can, you still have five minutes. Oh, okay. It's okay. Uh, this is very oh, interesting. Oh, so take your time. Well, all right. Five, let's say you have five. 
all, all right. So, so I wanted to go back to this compact lemma. Let me recall the compact lemma was supposed to say that if at some scale the, the solution is far from multiple configuration, then we capture something of order one uh, in mean at or uh, uh, the kinetic energy at the level of the kinetic energy. You know, uh, I mean, at, at this scale, so localized kinetic energy. So this is the statement, the precise statement. Um, which is stated as a contraposition of this uh, of what I've just said. Uh, is, so is stated like this: if uh, we have uh, sequences, so rho n is is a sequence of positive numbers, and rho n uh, psi n sorry, is a sequence of wave maps of bounded energy, and we are going to look at time intervals zero zero to rho, rho n. So if we assume that there exists a sequence going to infinity such that in the mean, so this is in the mean at in time, the kinetic energy vanishes, but energy localized to also to this scale. I mean, the scale which is slightly bigger than the scale, but bigger by anything which converges to infinity. If this converges to zero, then after extracting a subsequence, there exists another sequence which converges to infinity, smaller n, such that in this region, uh, it is close to a multi-bubble configuration. So this is a contraposition, what I said. If uh, we know that we are far from a multi-bubble configuration, then this means that in mean, this, this is equal to at least uh, of order one. It cannot, in mean, it cannot convert. Uh, this is what, uh, right. so this is essentially uh, uses ideas from G. Akeni. In our proof, we use strongly use ideas uh, of the paper by G. Akeni. To prove this compact assembly. And now there is a question of the boundary, this and non horizontal boundary. Um, and estimating this uses uh, uh, modulation. So on these time intervals, uh, on, on the time intervals where a solution is close to multiple configuration, we reduce it to an ODE system to uh, find explicit bounds on how quickly. Uh, this multi bubble has to collapse. Uh, once it starts, if we know that it collapses, because we look at the collision interval, we have an upper bound on how quickly it has to co collapse, explicit bound by solving some uh, differential, uh, ordinary differential inequalities. And using these uh, estimates, we, we can uh, uh, estimate this contribution of the non horizontal boundary on this picture. Or, um, uh, with the, the, the green the virial identity, um, and, and here we uh, we use um, uh, refined um, modulation parameters, which are inspired by the work of Raphael and, and uh, Scheftel, and possibly there were some other works which use similar ideas. But this is the one which I know, um, and. Uh, Oh, okay, which by refining the refining the it's like the European modulation, but uh, by adding the core terms, core terms, uh, refining the modulation parameters. This was the idea of Rafael Scheffel, and this is what allows us to deduce something from the modulation equations in our case. Um, okay, so, uh, so, sorry, yes, can you repeat what you mean by refined? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it refines. So the, we, we uh, look uh, at we have modulation uh, parameters here uh, cho chosen by orthogonality conditions. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, yeah, but if we write in equations, modulation equations for these uh, uh, objects, uh, uh, we cannot deduce. Uh, we cannot deduce uh, any. You, can you cannot close the estimates. Yeah, we, we cannot. Oh, the bound is too rough. If, uh, right. And so we introduce uh, uh, refined uh, objects, which means that uh, so we have a decomposition into bubbles and, uh, and error. And, and so we mm -hmm. introduce a, a parameter. Uh, no, no, I, I see, like, like the oh, hat okay. or whatever in there. Yeah, it's yeah, something like, like, like some have you have oscillations on the on the parameters and you try to, to remove them by adjusting them like with an uh, uh, you yeah. modulate around uh, 
uh, again around that parameter. Like you introduce if your parameter is B, you introduce like a B hat, and you uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, it's to it's to kill the oscillations. Okay, okay, I see what it is. Okay. To remove oscillations. Yeah, I guess this is certainly uh, is a well known idea. Uh, I believe in general, but I mean this context. Yes. Is, I mean what I meant is that in a similar context, it was used by Raphael Schaff. This is what I want to understand. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, let me stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, just uh, you can have two or three minutes just to conclude. I'm sorry, if it's my fault because I, I stopped you. Mm -hmm. No, no, it was it was just uh, so here I, I said a bit more in more detail how this region finally looks like when we where we integrate. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe maybe you can explain the picture we have in front of us. Like I think because this is maybe. Uh, Oh, okay, okay. No, no, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, but this is the beginning of the explanation. Uh, so, finally, the, the, we, we uh, the divide this collision interval into various sub intervals, and there are, there are three types essentially. So, there is a modulation type interval. And on this modulation type interval, I, we use what we just discussed a second ago. And what we find is that this non-horizontal boundary is much smaller than the scale, the, the spatial scale, by explicitly solving the ordinary differential inequalities. Uh, now we then we have the intermediate uh, intermediate situation where the distance uh, from a multi-bubble converges, so is bigger than some parameter which converges to zero. But still, it converges to zero so slowly that this non-horizontal boundary term is absorbed by, by the kinetic energy. So, so this is uh, we choose using the compactness lemma something. So we prove that this is possible to choose the theta n which converges to zero, converges to zero such that if we are far theta n far away from multi bubble, then this non-horizontal boundary term can be absorbed by what we get from the space-time integral of the right hand side of the BBR. Um, and and, and then we have a collision interval where the distance is bigger than some number which does not depend on n. And on this collision interval, uh, using this uh, fact which I explained that the duration of the collision is bigger than the space scale, we get a contribution which is bigger than the space scale. Okay. And, and finally, by summing up all these, uh, we get um, uh, we, we, we get a contradiction. So, so I'm explaining here because there is some worry maybe that I'm doing a circular choice of constant, but we, we introduce intermediate region is introduced to prevent the circular, circular choice of constants. So first we, we introduce intermediate region, which is supposed to uh, just the boundary term is, uh, is smaller than the contribution from the space time integral. In this modulate, the modulation, uh, part, the contribution is explicitly estimated to be much smaller than uh, the space scale. And from this uh, uh, interval in the middle, we get the contribution which is comparable to the space scale. And this scheme can repeat, it can be repeated mm -hmm. many times. The, then we sum up and then we get the contradiction. Yeah. So this is the picture. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jesse. Um, uh, are there questions? Uh, hi. Oh, actually, uh, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Ah, yes, um, I have a question about the construction of the multi -soliton. Why is it difficult to construct a multi -soliton? compared, for instance, to NLS or other cases where we know how to construct uh, them? Uh, uh, which which uh, which setting of NLS do you have in mind? Uh, I don't know, like on uh, RD and uh, the exponentially decaying one. Uh huh. Um, um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Here, in, in fact, I, I guess that um, how to say. This? So, if you let's say if you take one D Schrodinger, then you. You construct well. You can construct 
it is easily this is a relatively standard uh, so, solitons which are have exponentially small interaction right uh, so you, you use Galilean invariance to make them move and they move at different speeds, uh, correct? And then as T goes to infinity, they have expansion for interaction. In this case, this is standard to, to construct them. Uh, now here, is, so this is what I would call a weak interaction between solitons because it has no influence on the dynamics. Uh, so asymptotic in main order, they move at uh, constant speed. They, they are not influenced by each other at main order. Uh, this is something which does not exist here for a uh, critical wave map. If we want to sub, uh, study superpositions of bubbles, then we are always in the setting uh, which we could call as of strong interaction. Uh, so the interaction between bubbles uh, determines the dynamics of the bubble, bubbles. So I'm not claiming this is particularly difficult. I mean, uh, to, 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 to construct, uh, it's um, maybe a, a bit more difficult because you need to understand these interactions, but you, you, you can do it. This is not uh, so difficult, uh, but to construct two of them, then to construct three of them, I don't know, maybe we're not looking at the good norms, I don't know, but for some reason, uh, um, there is no construction at the moment of, of uh, more than two bubbles, uh, but I guess uh, this is uh, I guess this is maybe for technical reasons. I well, diff difficult to say, but but the, the, the difference is this: there is strong interaction as opposed to weak interaction. So one needs to understand the interaction, and this interaction determines what is the dynamics of the bubble. And, uh, but actually this strong interaction regime allows us to, to do our proof. So uh, we, you, it's more difficult at the level of construction, but it's easier at the level of classification, I would say. So the weak interaction regime is, is very difficult at the level of uh, classification. So I, I, don't, I, I, know, I don't know of any result about weak in, uh, solitary resolution for weak, weak interacting solitons, uh, except for complete integrable KTD. Yeah, okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. So, I uh, actually have a question concerning uh, DT Psi. Um, is it clear? Is it clear? I mean, you have like a result saying if DT Psi is small, then you are close to a number of solitons. Yeah, 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 so it's this one, this result, right? Yeah, 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 I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's not really quantitative, right? It's more like qualitative kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's a mean in time and it's important that it's the same scale here. So, so okay, if we, if we take any state which is, has dt psi equal to zero, and which has scale, let's say, much bigger than rho n, and we make it evolve at for time rho n, and then it will nothing will happen. So still, it will be, it will be, be very small. So uh, here we can deduce that it's close. It's close up to some. So it's close in the region which is essentially in the region of size rho n, okay? We need a sequence it converts to infinity, okay? But we don't control how quickly it converts. Uh, we just know it, uh, so essentially a, a small rn is like a big number. There, we could just as well say there exists an arbitrary large big number which such that big in this case big number times rho, rho n, it converges to a multi bubble. But if we take a, a sequence, uh, any fixed sequence, which is uh, much bigger than rho n, then we can construct the counter example very easily. Okay, are there other questions? More questions? No? Okay, so thank you again, uh, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Yusek. I, I, I was going to ask something, but maybe when you visit us next time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Keep, 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 keep. I hope you will not forget the question. No, okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll have time to talk in detail. Mm -hmm.